All right, so Black Rock Mountain is coming, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to do a set review. We're going to look at all 31 cards because as we were doing the piecemeal videos, you know, two, three at a time, you know, we made a couple commentaries. We made a couple predictions. And now with the whole set out, let's go back and take a look at that because some of it might have been right. Some of it might have been wrong. And we have a better understanding of how some of these mechanics are going to work. And, you know, God forbid I look like an idiot. Alright, so let's move on to the first card. We're going to start with class, and we're going to work our way to neutrals uh, in order of rarity. Alright, so we've got the Volcanic Lumber. The roots, the roots, the roots are on fire. We don't give up. You fuck this goddamn card. This card's a piece of shit. There's a reason why you let this shit burn, because it's garbage. You burn garbage. Alright, so yeah, this card, not going to see play. Unless you're some crazy, I love fucking tree kind of guy, obnoxious. Um, but yeah, no, this card is... <laughs> this is so trash. Alright, true to the flame. Now, I've heard arguments on both sides for this card. This is garbage. Why would I play this? I can play the Shade and Axe instead. Valid point. But at the same time... Hi, you now have a tempo trade option in your early game you could use against aggro and probably get at least two, maybe yeah, about two to one for this. All right, so I mean, there is that, but yeah, I'd still rather play a Shaded Naxxramas over this. All right, Core Ranger. All right, so as we know, Hunters are very much an aggressive deck and Part of that aggression means they're giving up their hand advantage to have board advantage. Kind of goes with the territory when you play Hunter. So most of the deck designs for Hunter are extremely based around aggro or a mid-range with a strong aggro core. So what this means is a good amount of time you're out of cards in your hand. Now Hunters used to have ways of replacing this and everybody cried. Fuck you all. Starring Buzzard got nerfed. To the point of unplayable. So, yeah, Hunters kind of took a hit for it. Now they have other ways of getting cards and this, that, and the other, mostly using uh, Cult Master and a couple other shenanigans, but really, uh, it's it was nowhere near as efficient as what they used to have. Even though other classes still have ways of abusing draw mechanics in this game. Moving on. So, the idea here was, well, if Hunters are already going to be sacrificing their hand advantage for board advantage, why not play into that? And here's where the design concept for Core Ranger comes. And it's a horrible concept for a minion. Alright, most of the time, if you put this in your deck, it's going to come down as a 4-4. Because you're not going to wait to get this out to where you can get it to a 7-7. Because, you know, if this is literally the last card you're playing out of your hand, pretty much it's going to be a guarantee that it's also going to be the last card that you have on the board as well. And let me tell you right now, a 7-7 seven, seven might seem like a really cool thing for 4 mana until you realize Big Game Hunter basically just deflated your bubble completely and now you have nothing left in your hand except for what's coming off the top deck. Kinda sucks ass. Truly sucks ass. So I don't see this card getting much use outside of Arena and even then people are going to feel really shitty about it. Alright, quick shot. Now, same mechanic but applied to a spell and thus makes it better. I wish I was kidding here. This is the same fucking shit, but better. Okay, so two mana, you get deal three damage. All right, cool. Uh, you're looking at Frostbolt. You're looking at um, Dark Bomb. All right, cool. Three damage. I'm okay with that. If your hand is empty, draw a card. So it's like a Dark Bomb with a bonus under certain circumstances. Well, you look at Frostbolt and you're always going to get that freeze mechanic and, you know, mages have ways of abusing freeze. Okay, cool. Now, why is this important? Why is this a cool thing? Well, as we've already previously stated, with Hunters, you give up hand advantage for board advantage. So, a good amount of the time, you are the top deck commando. So, getting this on a top deck is actually really, really cool. It means you're going to cycle through your deck and get to the cards you really need to finish off your opponent. Another way of using this is laying out your hand and this being the final thing that you do. Thus, you getting a card back and then on your draw, you'll have another card coming in. So, you'll at least have two cards and you've established a, a decent board presence in theory. 
So yeah, I definitely see this card getting a lot of use, especially in Face Hunter, especially in mid-range decks. It's, it's definitely going to come in here. The question comes down to what is getting replaced? Tough call. Tough fucking call. Now, there's also something else I'd like to point out here that is kind of interesting. This is another low-cost spell that could be used in conjunction with, say, oh, I don't know, a wild pyromancer to possibly power a really big-ass fucking Gazrilla. Yeah, we all know that shit ain't gonna happen, but hey, it's a possibility. All right, moving on. Okay, Dragon's Breath. Uh, here comes another set of failed mechanics. Um, all right, so... <laughs> Deal four damage. Cost one less for each minion that died this turn. Now, initially, I saw this. Oh my god, a five and a spell for mage. This is going to be incredible. This is going to be awesome. This is... No, 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 no. Okay, so the, the, the basic purpose behind this card and why it's supposed to work is you're supposed to be focusing more on board exchanges to gain advantage over your opponent and because of that you'll get a lower cost spell that you can throw at either your opponent's face or a minion that you couldn't quite take out effectively. That's the general principle of the card. Um, and unfortunately the only time I found this to have any value was so late game using you know flame strike and then hoping I cleared enough stuff to where I could get this off really really cheap to finish off say like a giant or a Ragnaros or some shit like that. Um, and, and generally, at that point, you're pretty fucked either way. So, I don't really care for this card. I, I can think of way better cards. I would much rather have in my deck than this card. And I kind of feel bad about that. I really do. So, I mean, there, there are times where this might eke you out a win here or there. But if you're trying to play to always get value off this card, you're going to be very frustrated most of the time. Alright. The Flame Waker. Not Walker, but Waker. All right. Now, this is kind of like a knife juggler, but for spells. Sure, why not? All right. Now, this is kind of cool in like a mid-range design. You know, spare parts can power this guy. That's a really cool thing. But you kind of have to like have the spells available to you. So you may want to hold on to that unstable portal. But Arcade Missile. That's some fucking value with this damn card. You get two of these out and throw an arcade missile? Wow, that's like Avenging Wrath level fuck off. Alright, that that's like some serious power right there of randomosity. Uh, but other than that, the card is, is pretty decent, but it's not great. It's not inherently great like a knife juggler is. But it fits more aesthetically to what mages do. So... I don't know. I, I think this card is definitely going to have a place, but it's not going to be as spectacular as some people actually think it will be. Alright. Now we're on to Paladin, the Solemn Vigil. This is probably one of the only examples of the uh, cost less for minions that died this turn that I actually fucking like. And here is why. Alright. So we all know Paladins have, like, probably the most effect, like, effectively cheap combo to clear the board, including their own. Alright, I'm talking about Wild Pyromancer Equality. That's a 4 mana, basically Wrath of God for those of you who played Magic the Gathering. Boom, get the hell off my board. All of you. Alright, so guess what? Because of that, if you can get a high value on that, 4, 5, whatever, you're going to get value out of this. Alright? Just to give you the scenario here, turn five, your opponent has three minions on the board. You do your Wild Pyromancer combo. That's four minions that died that turn, which means that one extra mana you had left over is drawing you two cards. Now, of course, you're talking a three card combo, but you're recouping two on it. So really, it's only a one card like loss there to basically whiteboard. You know, that's kind of cool if you think about it. The only other similar option is Twisting Nether, and, well, that's super expensive and it's Warlock, so I guess this actually kind of gives a little bit of value back to Paladin, and I actually like this card. I think this card is probably going to show up as a one-off in most mid-range or pally control decks, but uh, Consecration might actually be moving out of those decks in order for that whole combo synergy to work even more effective, which means Paladins are losing a 4-drop 
Hey, wait a minute, that means they got space for other shit, right? Well, let's take a look at one of those other things that's most likely going to be filling in that hole. The Dragon Consort. Holy shit balls, this thing is amazing. I'm not even going to get to the fact that it's a dragon. I'm not even going to get to the battle cry. Five mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Lowest them stat value. Battle cry. The next dragon you play costs two less. Initially, when I saw Dragon Synergy, I made two statements. One, there's going to have to be like a one and three drop dragon to at least give some validity for other classes to actually use it. Or, they're going to have to have some sort of ramp mechanic, because druids already have ramp built into them. You're going to have to give some ability for other classes to be able to kind of use dragons effectively. Well, they gave it to Paladin, because, you know, fuck everybody else. So, what I like about this ability, it doesn't have to be play. you know, you don't have to have, be able to play that dragon that turn. It could be the next turn, it could be five turns down the road. It doesn't have to be a dragon in your damn hand. You can draw it three turns later, then play it and get that reduction. It's literally paying forward. That's amazing. That is some shit right there that is going to change the game. And because it's a battle cry, this is a battle cry of an aura effect waiting to happen. I kind of hope we see more things like this coming in the future from Blizzard. This is a really good design concept. This is very similar to stuff that me and Knox actually designed. Um way back I mean we, we actually went and looked at some of the dragon uh, stuff that we designed way early on because a lot of people were asking us to do this and this this is almost exactly what we came up with to be perfectly honest with you it's even the same damn color of fucking bronze so yeah this guy amazing just simply amazing it enables dragon synergy deck for paladin which is going to be a really strong contender Come this new meta, once all the Black Rock Mountain cards are out, Dragon Synergy Paladin is going to be a thing. It's going to show up in tournaments, it's going to show up on ladder, and it's going to be kind of problematic for a lot of people to deal with. It's just so much high value cards just getting pounded on you. So, yeah, and it fits aesthetically very well with Paladin. All right. Now we're on to Priest Resurrect. Thank you, Blizzard, so much for finally going against something you said you would not do earlier on in development. <coughs> now, I'm not poking fun at Blizzard here. I am not. But they had said many times that they did not want to deal with graveyard mechanics. And I guess in their own unique way, they're not quite really dealing with graveyard mechanics with this card because it's random friendly. Even though friendly does reduce the amount of possible things you could pull with this all right but smart deck design you can always enable this to pull some good value case in point a typical control priest that could come out with this is going to have a lot of spells in the early game and probably like the only low drops you're really looking at is going to be Norshire cleric and a dark cultist right well that also means that things like um Injured Blade Master, getting another one of those coming back. Uh, Sludge Belchers most likely are going to be coming back. Sylvanas coming back. There's so many scenarios of good value cards that you're going to get another use out of for just two mana. Now, getting a Sylvanas back is a huge fucking thing. It's a scary thing that most people don't ever want to deal with. Oh, you sil silence my Sylvanas. Well, I'm just going to run it in there and play two mana and roll the dice to try to get her back. You know that shit's gonna happen. Even, what's even worse though, if you think about this, you could actually possibly get this to happen. Play Sylvanas, right? Sack her deliberately with your own Shadow Word Death, play Resurrect, and get her back. It, it could happen, it could happen, and that's gonna make for one of those great Trollden videos right there. But, in all honesty, this card is amazing on its own for so many different reasons. Um. And the examples I give are very much not those reasons, but holy crap, graveyard mechanic. And sorry, Blizzard, you you, you went against your own own words, but I guess you had to because you can't limit yourself in game design. That's like the worst thing you could ever do in a game like this. All right, Twilight Well. Okay, so like I said earlier. One of the things you were going to need in order to make dragon decks viable was low-cost options for dragons. Please ignore that train. 
Now, they gave us this one drop. I was expecting a three, but I guess we'll have to settle for, you know, the Darkwing Technician instead. All right, so you give us this one drop. It's a two-one. Eh? But let's read the battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain plus two health. So it comes down as a two-three most of the damn time. All right, so you're giving us a zombie chow without the downside, but hey, this is Priest. That downside is a benefit to us because we have Akanai Soul Priest, which means we can use that as basically a mini fireball. Oh, hey, we're gonna use this as a temple trade and punch you in the face for five. Have a nice day. So I, I'm, I'm still ambivalent about how I feel about that. I mean, am I going to still run? the zombie chow and running this and running Northshire, at that point you're talking six fucking one drops. You're no longer control at that point. You're more like aggro mid-range at best. So... I, I, I'm not sure if this is a trap card. I think you're going to have to like redo how your structuring is going to be with Priest in order to make this viable. And I know some people are going to come up with some cool concept for it, and I can't wait to see this, but I'm still not 100% sold on this card. But it is definitely a tool that priests were going to need. I still think a 3-drop would have been better, but, you know, hey. All right, moving on. So, Dark Iron Skulker. Yes, because rogues needed more fucking board clear. Holy Jesus Christ. All right. Um, this card is basically like, uh, hi, have backstabs for everyone on the board. This gives rogues the ability of removing muster for battle, quartermaster combo with two cards. You play this, then you play fan and knives, and you kill everything except for the quartermaster. And even still, the quartermaster is going to trade into this and probably have to use your remainder of, uh, your Light's Justice to smack into this, so you're actually doing full board damage. That's go- I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I cleared your board and did four damage to you. I'm okay with that. Plus, you got a card draw out of that combination. How is that a bad thing ever? In other scenarios, this is going to work very, very well, um, because you can hold on to your backstabs and or use them in your early game, and then later on, you'll have this guy. The only downside is, you know... There are times where you're not going to be able to use this guy. Uh, Injured Plate Master and this guy basically are like, Haha, you are useless. You can't do nothing to me. And Skulker goes, eh, fuck you. Yeah, I'm sorry. All dwarves are Scottish to me. All right, moving on. Gang up. Yes, because nothing says rogue like totally exploiting a situation. All right, so as we know, Hearthstone, you have a 30 card deck limit. Um, now, a while back, me and Noxious, we, we did some theory crafting for a card, conceptualizations and designs that we do on our show, and one of the things that we came up with were ways of expanding upon that 30 deck design without actually expanding on it. We had weapons that did this, we had minions that did this, we had spells that did this, to basically increase your deck size with certain cards. Now, there's an inherently bad thing about this. And there's an inherently good thing about this, too. So, I mean, it's a double-edged sword in many ways. But here they put it on a spell, and you choose a minion, and you shuffle three copies of it into your deck. Now, this may not seem all that impactful, but then you start realizing, wait a minute, now he can actually get copies of the stuff that I'm playing and use it against me. All right, true, but it's still a two-mana loss for him to do this. Maybe in tempo, I could see this was viable. Oil Rogue, I... I've had people argue this with me. Okay, so you're sacking two to basically get a whole bunch of SI7 agents. This was the argument that was presented. And, I don't know. I guess it could work, but I just feel like that's a tempo loss that Will Rogue can't really take. That That's my opinion on it, alright? But other than that, it's kind of a cool card, and because it exists, it's something that Rogue players may have to worry about coming from... Nefarian. Yeah, if anybody ever uses that shit card. Alright, moving on. Fire Guard Destroyer. Probably one of my favorite cards that was introduced. It's common, and it's a badass. Seriously, 4 mana, for and it's worst stat line, 4-6. Which, by the way, 4-6 for 4 is an amazing stat line. That is value all day long. That is like 2-3-1 to one trade all day long. 
Now, here's where it gets even funnier. Or it could be a 5-6. Or it could be a 6-6. Six, six, or it could be a 7-6. Seven, six. And, you know, 7-6 is as high as it could possibly go. Which, you know, some people said that's good. Some people said that bad. Personally, I don't really care if it goes to 7-6. Seven, six. I don't. Oh, but Big Game Hunter will kill it. Well, fuck off. Big Game Hunter kills that. That means Dr. Boom's fine. That means Ragnaros is fine. That means insert high attack minion here is fine. If I can pull a Big Game Hunter with this guy, I'll do that all day long and say, thank you, may I have another? Because I know you don't carry two Big Game Hunters. Though, red and black hand, maybe. Okay. Um, I'm joking. So, this guy is just amazing, and if you don't have an answer for him, he's just gonna wreck the shit out of things. Tempo all day long, and... God. And then you throw in Healing Totem. Good night. <laughs> just amazing. Just fucking amazing. And I would like to point out something. Alright. Because it is a 4 drop, it means it's also possible to get this out of the piloted sky golem but it'll only be a three six at that point with no special battle cries or any of that crap but still it's still a three six that's that's good value that is good value i don't care who you are that's still good value all right moving on lava shock yes the one mechanic that keeps shaman from being completely op in dominance we're going to give you a way of kind of finagling with that Alright, so I, I, I theorycrafted that this card could enable a pure burn shaman deck. And I'm going to reiterate this, it can enable a pure burn shaman deck. Uh, in more mid-range centric decks and tempo-y type decks, I think this is still going to be used because, hey, congratulations, some of your best minions, i.e. Uh, Earth Elemental, now aren't so shitty. And you'll actually have to follow up the next turn. Alright? Uh, the only downside is your Earth Elemental is most likely coming down on turn 7. Or... But hey, you're not going to have to suffer too much from your Overload because of this. But, it is important to know that this card, most of the time, should be the last thing you play in a turn where you're overloading yourself. Now, it also should be put out there that, that you can unlock all your Mana Crystals, including the ones you got on this turn and the ones that's going to apply on the previous turn, or on the next turn, by using Lava Shut. That is a huge amount of get fucked right there to your opponent, all right? Because Shaman spells have some of the highest damage per mana cost, and now you're removing their downside? All right? So now I'm, I'm going to lay out a very probable scenario here for you guys. All right, so here we are, turn five. I'm going to play out Feral Spirits, and I'm going to Lava Shock. Congratulations, now turn six, I can play my Flame Elemental and still have four presents. This is actually a real scenario that happens quite often. Being, going into turn six, most Shaman players won't do anything that has overload in turn five because they want to get their um, Flame Elemental out on six. It's the most logical thing. So that inhibits their choices. Now, not so much. But it's still two cards, you know. So you can kind of look at that, I guess. But still, this is going to enable a lot of really cool stuff for Shaman. And I can't wait to see what people do with it. All right. So now we're on to Warlock with the Imp Game Boss. All right. So... Demons! Yes, we're getting another demon for Warlocks because that's what Warlocks are known for. And with GBG, we saw demon decks popping up quite frequently. Malganus was just a powerhouse for that. Mistress of Pain was enabling that quite nicely. And now here you got another low drop demon with really no downside at all, I'd like to point out, unlike other demons. Okay, so it's a 2-4, which is a a stat line Blizzard's really trying to push onto us. 2-4 for 3 is a good thing. Okay. And while you're using this to tempo trade, you're getting one ones on the board. Not to mention the fact because this is a demon, you have certain offensive slash buff spells, i.e. Demon Fire and Bellheart, that are going to make this guy 
explode. So let's look at this. Demon fire. Congratulations. You've got a 4-6 that's going to spawn shit every time it smacks into something. I'm okay with that. So, yeah, definitely a really cool thing. And I'd like to point out that you start looking at the low curve of Warlocks. Let's see, you've got Voidwalkers. You've got Flame Imp. I guess you can kind of count Blood Imp in there, too, but nobody ever fucking uses that. All right, so then you go to two. Well, what do you have for two? Okay, we're not going to count the Succubus because losing any kind of hand advantage is kind of a crap thing, even though you can replace it by sacking life. Okay, so you got Mr. Stepain. Sure, why not? Three, now you got this guy. Four, you got the Void Collar. You see what I'm getting at? There's a lot of different demons in that low drop that you could actually make demon aggro. Matter of fact, Zoo could be completely demon. All right? Seriously, it's like Nightbreed fucking Meridian. Boom! Yes, those are two Clive Parker stories. Go look it up. All right, so... Yeah, that's going to be an important thing. Now, let's also get back into demons on the next card. Demon Wrath. Deal two damage to all non-demon minions. Okay, so congratulations. Now, you can screw your opponent's aggro setup. So, Hunters, boom. Mage, boom. Lots of different things you can do here with this. And it doesn't affect your board like Hellfire does. That's kind of important. Now, are you going to not carry Hellfire? Well, hell no, because three damage is quite impactful in this game. Um, are you going to stop carrying uh, the other AoE option you have where you sack a minion? Eh, probably not. So this is just another tool. It gives you another different flavor, another option you could use. And it's something I think will probably end up seeing some action here. And, of course, I'd like to point out Demon Wrath, and then you can throw down your nice little mortal coil on something and finish it off and get a card draw. So, you know, not bad. Not bad at all. I like it. I really do. Um, and it kind of sucks that it, they're lowering down AoE for like certain classes, just lo long. But it, it it will it will hurt other things, but just not this specific type. Which kind of makes me think that Shaman's gonna get like a new AoE that won't mess with Murlocs, and I'm like, oh god, that kind of scares me a little bit. But it kind of works with Warlocks. It really does, so I'm okay with it. Alright, so now we get on to the warrior. You know the class that got fucked over in this expansion. I'm sorry, they did. Alright, so we get to the Axe Flicker. Four mana per two five. Whenever this minion takes damage, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Okay, I really tried to look at this from a, an objective standpoint of how I would use this. Okay, if I can get this down on the board with this, 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 this. Okay, that's a lot of setup. And then the whirlwind and headache ensued. Then I started looking at it, well, what, what about with Warsaw Commanders and Inner Rages and other things of that nature? It's like, okay, I kinda guess, sure, why not, but it's not all that great. I mean, maybe in an aggro deck you might be able to get some really cool shenanigans off this. Puts a 4-drop, alright? So that means it's contesting with Despite, Frothing Berserker, and Actually, not even Frothing Berserker, but a few other standardized things in there. Corcrom Elite. I take Corcrom Elite over this guy all day fucking long. I'm I'm sorry, I would. He he seems cool. He's got a lot of flavor. And he's a he's a dwarf, and I like dwarfs, but no. Alright, and on to the next suck card. Revenge! Hi, have a more expensive whirlwind. But guess what? If you're below a certain life total, it does more. A two mana, three damage with a condition. All right, so I guess it's kind of like Demon Wrath in its own little way, but it's, no matter what, it's still damaging your board, so it's inherently worse than Demon Wrath. Um, yeah, it does kind of suck. I'm not going to lie. This is definitely not something you want to play if you have Acolytes of Pain, and it's like, oh, I only need that one damage, and you got Revenge, and you're at 11 life, you're going to be, no. It's a bad card. Really, it is. It really, really, really is. Um, oh, what about board clear? You have fucking brawl. Use that. It's much better. All right. Moving on. So, now that we're done with Warrior, we get to get into the neutral options. Blackwing Technician. This is probably going to become a standardized 3-drop in a couple decks, most notably Dragons. 
Any deck that's going to be using dragons, this guy is going to show up. This guy, in many ways, is superior to the Tinkertown Technician, and here is why. Tinkertown Technician, you actually have to keep a mech on the board before you get the value out of him. This one, you ain't got to have shit on the board. You just have to have shit in your hand before you get the value out of it. So turn three, getting a 3-5 or ascension level stats for three mana. That, that's going to be good either way. All right, and then come turn four, you can play something else, and so on and so on and so on. So you get value out of this pretty much inherently. And yeah, it's it's gonna be become like a standardized in all dragon decks. All right, the Black Wing Corruptor. Hold on, let me just make sure of this. Yes, Black Wing Corruptor. All right, five mana for a 5-4 battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, deal three damage. now. I had made some comments about this card and how I didn't really care for it initially because when I saw the card in, with all the dragons that were available, I was not seeing the viability of a dragon deck at that time. Now that we have the entire set, I can actually go back, re-review this card, and give my commentary on it without pretty much somebody jumping on my shit and saying that I'm being closed-minded. No, I was being pragmatic. You should really look up this definition before you talk and comment. All right, so. Blackwing Corruptor! This is actually a really good card, and it's a, a card that is needed in Dragon decks. It's basically a neutral flame elemental. It is conditional, but most of the time you're going to have that condition. Anyway, um, it's got a pretty decent body for five, I guess. it's You can kill it quite easily, to be honest with you. But it's the three damage. You use that on the opponent's face, you can use that on a minion, so you can kind of always get board advantage and this could really help you in board advantage and that's what I like about the card. The prerequisite like I said is kind of a drawback but at the same time as long as you're playing correctly it's almost never going to be a drawback. Alright moving on to the next card. Dragon Kid Sorcerer. Now this guy is the one who I am most interested to play with to be perfectly honest with you. I like minions that get bonuses off of stuff that happens to them. Now whenever this card is targeted with a spell. Whether you play it or your opponent plays it, it gets a bonus! This is where things get really interesting. Now, we saw what happens with Priest and this card, i.e. Melon's Chosen. Yeah, that turns this thing into a monster pretty damn quickly. Throw in a couple power word shields, wow, this guy just keeps spiraling and spiraling and spiraling! Alright, so is this an inherently good card? Yes and no. Yes on the fact that you can get some really good damage out of it. No for the fact that it's a card you have to invest other cards in in order to make it better. And in all honesty, if I'm playing just, you know, putting this one card in to increase this by three instead of putting a minion in that might have, you know, four or five or six possible damage output from it. <coughs> I'm not feeling really too happy about it. But with if you want to play with um, Velen's Chosen and this card, it's an amazing combination. Plus, you're giving yourself spell power. So, hey, a lot of those little cheap spells and more mid-range spells get a little bit of value. Yes, I'm talking about Mind Blast. I will make Priest Aggro work. I swear I will. So, there's that. And... I think that's kind of cool. In other decks, I can kind of see this working. Um, because it starts at three, I guess you could kind of get away with the whole warrior or song commander combination and this, that, and the other. But at the same time, wouldn't Raging Morgan just be inherently better? Um, when you get to Shaman, it gets even more funny. All right. Okay, so you put this down. And if it survives, congratulations. Your next turn. Oh, here. Rockbiter, Rockbiter, and... Wind Fury, have at it. Yes, you really want to do the math on this one? That's a huge amount of damage. Huge. But again, that's like a magical fairy Christmas scenario, and it's not as effective as you might think. All right. So we are moving on to the next card. Hungry Dragon. Every When I saw this, first thing came in my mouth was hungry, hungry, hit bows. Hungry, hungry, hit bows. All right. So, four mana for a five, six. Okay, Pit Lord stats. Battle Cry, summon a random one cost minion for your opponent. Now, a lot of people have made commentaries about how this is a bad card and how it's, you know, this, that, and the other. 
Okay, so let's take a, a, a really good look here. I play this down. What is the best possible one drop minion you can get from this? Flame Myth. Period point blank. So that means if they trade the Flame Myth into this, they're still going to have to trade something else in to kill it. Now that could be a Frostbolt. That could be another minion. Cool. If it's another minion, then you kind of get two for one value, but not really. It's more like one for one value. So for a four drop with those kind of stats, it's a little disheartening. But here's another thing that I think a lot of people overlooked. The off-curve plays. So this comes down. I got two mana left over. Oh, you got yourself a 1-3. Boom, I'm going to hit that with uh, a spell anyway. Hey, wow, I still got a 5-6. You're still going to have to contend with. There are ways of working around that. And that's kind of an important thing. I do think that this card is going to see a lot of play. And it's probably going to carry a lot of decks. Alright, moving on. Draconid Crusher. Now, because of Dragon Codsword, and it is funny, in a lot of the Paladin decks I've seen, nobody is showing this card off. And probably for a really, really good reason. Um, it, it doesn't look like it's that great of a card. It really doesn't. Uh, except for when you get to Arena. Then this card has some huge value. If your opponent has 15 or less health, bam, get a 9-9 out of this guy. And it's a battle cry, so... That's cool. Problem is, you're creating a big minion that they're just going to hit with Big Game Hunter, or they're going to hit with a hard removal just as a defensive option. But hey, if they're using it on that, then they're not going to use it on something else, and you can use that to your advantage. But still, it's a six drop, and there's so many more powerful six drops in this game, I don't think it's really going to see playing constructed. Arena, however, this guy is going to be damn near an auto pick every damn time. Just for the simple fact that it's a six, six for six with the possibility of being a nine, nine. For six. That's damn near like that's better than giant status in so many ways. Alright. Volcanic Drake. Okay, a minion that has the whole things that die, this become blah 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 blah. Again, paladin, it makes sense. Any other class, not really. I'm not overly thrilled with this card. It's so easy to do four damage in this game. Haha, I get this out. Haha, I play Bomb Lumber. I mean, how crappy do you feel right then? Seriously. And I, I got ready for cheaper. Or better yet, I play Flame Cannon and another minion behind it. I'm feeling really good right then. The only time this card is really good to get out is if you can get him out A, cheap. B, you're not playing up against a class that can deal 4 damage AoE, i.e. Mage, Priest, whatever. Um, and you can kind of get him behind some protection to where, you know, he might actually get some value after that. But if you can't, then he kind of is just taking up space that could be better used by other cards. So I'm not overly thrilled by this guy at all. I, I guess he has some value, but I'm just not really feeling it. Alright, the Grim Patron. Oh, wow. Welcome to Casual Fun Time. Alright, so we saw in the stream how Warrior could exploit this. Yeah, we all knew that shit was coming. All right, we looked at its ability and it's like, yeah, that just screamed warrior all day long. Are you kidding me? The only thing else that was missing from that was a wild pyromancer. Um, but hey, this is kind of cool. Uh, and you can kind of build your board really nicely with it, but it's five mana for a three, three, which means in order to get any kind of like cool value with it, you're going to have to have um, Warsong Commander already in play, or you're talking about like turn nine mechanics. And then it's basically, you get the Warsong Commander down, right? And then you're going to have to lay out uh, some, like, zero cost deal, deal damage to this guy to make him spawn out another one and just keep doing damage. And then you're throwing out a, a freaking Whirlwind. and <sighs> That's a lot of fucking bullshit, man. That really is. But it could work somewhat, but not, not consistently. Not consistently at all. It's a fun card. It really is a fun card. All right, moving on. Dragon Egg. What the fuck, Blizzard? Seriously, I know you want to you know, give us dragons, and whelps are technically dragons, but fuck this. This card is garbage all day long. Oh, hey, here's... I, I, I'm just going to get this guy up there and make some whelps. Well, here's the problem with this, Blizzard. 
all the dragon cards that are in the game say absolutely nothing about whelps on board. They're all whelps in or dragons in hand. Not dragons on board, dragons in hand. So what the hell is this really going to achieve? Aesthetics, I guess? I don't know. I I don't like it. I, I think this is really... I don't really care for... I mean, if this thing had Death Rattle when die some of, you know, like two, two ones, I would think this was amazing all day long. Because it would be easy to deal with, but it could give you some, you know, a little bit of a board that you could do some stuff with. But they didn't go that route. Instead, they made it really craptacular. I'm very disappointed in this card, Blizzard. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I guarantee this is probably going to be the one card that most people don't touch. Other than, you know, the Volcanic Lumber. Alright. Nefarian! Let's get on to Legendaries. You'll notice that there were no Epic cards this time around. What the fuck, Blizzard? Alright, that's fine. Nefarian! Nine mana for an 8-8, eight, eight, you're slow as fuck! Unless you're in Paladin or Druid. Battlecry, add two random spells to your hand. From your opponent's class. So this opens up some interesting possibilities, but again, he's slow. You're going to have to draw out your opponent's big removal options before you get this guy out and get any value off of him. But you're getting two spell cards from your opponent, Shiv. That's a great thing. Totemic Might. Uh, deadly Poison if you're not a weapon class. There's a lot of really shit cards that exist in this game that are really not going to give you any value that are spells. And that's the God's honest truth. But there are times where you're going to get some spells that are going to swing the game dramatically. So, saying that this is inherently a bad card because of this, that, and the other, not so much. I'm basing it on the fact that it's a very, very slow card outside of two decks. Which means it's going to be relegated to only those two decks. And in all honesty, I would much rather play a Ysera than this. All day long. I'm sorry, Nefarian, but you can get your Blackwing ass out of here. Pun. Alright, moving on. Red Blackhand. Yes, because what's better than a fucking big game hunter? A big game hunter with a fucking prerequisite that can only hit goddamn legendaries. But it's a big body with absolutely no fucking defense. Seriously, what the hell? How the hell did you do this to fucking Blackhand? Seriously, Blizzard. Red Blackhand should not have four life. He should, at best, I, I would have actually put him at like a six, seven. To be perfectly honest with you, six, seven. Eight, four feels like shit. Feels very, very fucking insulting. I understand why you did it. I do. But... This, it, uh, we got to see him use very well, and he pretty much betted a lot in that pre-structured, damn near scripted game that we saw in the streams and all that, but... Nobody's really gonna want to play this. Seriously. I mean, oh, I got red and black hand on my deck. Oh, you face Hunter. Your red is absolutely garbage. It's gonna do nothing. Oh, I can use it on your Leroy. Uh, okay, let's put it this way. By the time you saw Leroy, you're dead anyway. So, yeah, no. No. Okay, another... <laughs> Major Domo. Now, I made some statements uh, in a previous video. I was like, I'm really hoping they do something spectacular for Major Domo because he was a very integral part of this area. And I hope they do him justice with his hero power abilities and whatnot. And they dropped the ball on this. So nine mana for a nine seven slow as fuck. Death Rattle, replace your hero with Ragnaros the Fire Lord. How the hell is that a good thing? My god, that's like, here, have a better version of Alex Strazen that fucks you in the ass. This is like reverse Alex Straza. Instead of getting it to use it on your opponent, it happens to you. This is like the most negative drawback for such a craptacular card. Who would ever use this outside of a, um, maybe a mage using ice block? But other than that, hell no. Hell no. Nobody would ever play with this card. 
This is just going to sit there and collect dust in people's collections. Nobody's ever going to use this shit. It'd be dumb. You might see some, you know, casual fun deck use it, but... Come on! It's garbage! I can say that without any inhibition. This sucks! Alright, Chromegus. Eight mana for six eight. Okay, this is slow, but it's not so bad. We're, we're talking about KT fucking stat line here. That's a good thing. All right. Whenever you draw a card, put another copy into your hand. Now, I'd like to point out a couple things here. This is not so much giving you more hand advantage. It's just doubling up the cards you're getting for said hand advantage. So inherently, it is giving you hand advantage. It's just doubling up your options. Okay, so... Oh, hey, this is out. I drew a swipe. I get another swipe. See what I'm saying here? Where it gets really scary is, oh, look, I got an innervate. I get two innervates. In the late game, that could be kind of eh, wild growth. I get another wild growth. Yeah, yeah. Wild growth is where this kind of gets a really scary in the late game play. Um, and if I have to explain why that's a problem, you guys obviously have not been playing Druid lately. So, yeah. Now... Initially, I thought it's like, hey, what's going to happen with this and Ysera? Well, they changed the scripting of Ysera. It's not so much you're drawing a card. You're getting one that comes to your hand. It's not drawing. They changed the wording on that specifically so you could not get double Ysera, uh, Ysera Awakens. Which, that might have been a good thing. That really was probably a good thing. So, I'm not going to argue with that. Um, but yeah, I, I think this guy is going to show up, and again, pretty much only in two decks, and that's going to be Druid and Paladin. Like every other damn Dragon card, they're pretty much going to be relegated to Druid and Paladin. Alright. And now the final card. The big badass of the set. And I am going to say he is the badass of the set. He is damn near the Sylvanas Replacer in so many deck designs. At the end of your turn, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one. Holy shit. With the exception of, like, Hunter and maybe some aggro decks, I'm having a really hard time of coming up with, you know, decks that would not use this. Seriously. It's basically, okay, turn six, I play this out. Every other card in my hand at the end of the turn is basically getting a coin slapped on top of it. So if you can get a really big, huge hand draw... And then you play this guy the next turn, more power to you. Holy crap, are you going to be in such a good position. Now, classes that I think are going to abuse the shit out of this. And there's one, one in particular that's going to abuse the hell out of this all day long. And that's Druid. Yes, because Druid can ramp, you can get this out earlier and thus you get more value out of it. Which means, when this comes down, you need to kill it that turn. Because if you allow him to keep getting more value... Eventually, his cards are going to become dirt cheap. You're talking like zero-cost swipes here, people. That is never a good thing for your survivability. All right. Now, there's another class that's probably going to exploit this pretty good. But it means it's all, it'll have to wait till turn 7 until it comes down. Unless they have coin, then they can do one on 6. And that is Rogue. Shiv, what the fuck are you smoking to? Fuck off. No. Rogue plus Conceal. You see where I'm getting with this? Even the spare parts. If you get that finicky cloak field plus this guy, congratulations. That's huge value. But that's only for a turn. But hey, it doesn't matter. You're still going to get even more reduction. This could actually, in theory, make big heavy minion decks a lot more viable. But not as much as you'd think. Because everybody knows exactly how much of a threat this guy is. He's almost a trap. But it's a trap you must actually carry. Because... It's kind of like the whole Dr. Boom thing. If you don't have Dr. Boom, then you're not playing with power kind of thing. I mean, how often do we see, you know, turn seven comes around. Ha ha, I Dr. Boom goes to my opponent's turn. Ha ha, I Dr. Boom. And then it goes back to my turn. Ha ha, I big game hunter. Ha ha, I big game hunter. I've played this match like a dozen times last week alone. Same basic thing here. This guy is pretty much going to meta himself out. Uh, fireballs exist. Lothab exists. Lots of things exist that are... Kind of really going to negate his effectiveness in many a ways. Um, but he is definitely going to be an auto included in a lot of deck designs. So get ready for that, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, he is available week one, i.e. as of tomorrow. So be prepared.
be very, very prepared. Shit's about to hit the fan. Well, that is all of the 31 cards. Wow, 50 minute freaking video on that one. I'm actually kind of shocked by it, to be perfectly honest. Whew! Black Rock Mountain is going to cause a lot of power shifts. I honestly feel druids, paladins, and in some degree rogues are getting a huge benefit out of it. Hunter was already pretty fucking annoying. They're going to keep staying annoying. Mage, eh. I'm okay with where they're going to be at. Um, Priest, Resurrect's going to be a really great tool, and time will tell if that's really going to benefit you all that well. I, I'm still holding out on that damn little Twilight Well. Um, druid... Druid, you're getting a boost out of this, but not for the cards that they gave you. Sorry. True fact. Warrior, uh, fuck off. You guys have been dominant for way too long. Anyway, Shaman, wow, Shaman gets power boost. So we're, we're seeing a slight shift a little bit in, you know, top tiering and second tiering um, classes, but all in all, it's not going to change overly dramatic much, but it is definitely going to shift things circular in a way. All right, basically those that are here are just going to move down one or to side one. Placements are going to get jingled, but no, like, bottom tier class is going to instantly skyrocket to first. So, I'm unfortunately pretty sure you're not going to go there. But it's going to be interesting either way. So, that's the end of this review of the entire set. Thank you. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, leave me comments down there. Um, don't post up stupid pictures of yourself or some other stupid meme. I will just fucking delete that shit, especially one of your head coming out of a vagina. I don't know why somebody put that up there, but it had to go. Till next time, this is Shiv saying, fuck man, it's hot in Florida. Bye-bye.